minute you put a price tag on your painting and hang it on the wall and expect somebody to come in and buy it, you're in the business of marketing. You're in the business of selling. You're in, you're in the business of business. That intersection is something that I think gets overlooked a lot. Artists tend to just not want to deal with it. And on the other hand, there are business people who just really think art is a totally foreign concept and they don't understand how it's integrated into real life, how it actually tells us about ourselves as human beings. I come from a marketing background uh, and I had a point where I decided to create something called marketing art instead of art marketing. So this is one case like that. I use something coming from marketing to create a piece of art. This work, I think, sits at the intersection of art and, and business, really, because it's taking traditional business techniques of the mystery shopper, and that's about analyzing the business processes through a mystery shopper who's unknown and is sort of a spy that comes in to a retail outlet, usually. I um, had to go and to uh, be a mystery shopper, and then I had to buy even a pair of shoes. They were very expensive, and then I had to um, ask some questions, and then I had to bring the shoes back in the same day. And then I did all of that, and then I go back home, and I have to make a report, and I had to answer a couple of questions, many questions, and that's how they build up their uh, idea of uh, what's the quality of the service that they have. And I tried to use this and to try to apply this into art. This mystery art shopping project um, is very conceptual in nature. It takes you a while to figure out that um, this work took place maybe a month ago or two months ago. It was supervised by the artist, but the artist is not in it. These images are not meant to be art images. These are documentations of what was going on. And then when you turn and you see another projection on another wall that's got words floating around that were from the survey of the people who did the art shopping. And so you really have to piece it all together when you get into an exhibition like this. I think there is very nice parallel in between their answers of the survey because this um, compilation over there shows their, these people, certain mystery shoppers, while they perform mystery shopping at shopping. And then I have the questions I ask in the survey and their, their answers. So I can find this very nice parallel in between their answers and their real behavior on the place. So how they really interacted and how they were exploring this exhibition and at the same time how they express what in words the, this experience. And I think what Pavlina has done here is raise the question, what happens to these shoppers? These shoppers who are true business marketing people when you drop them into an art context that they normally wouldn't do. And on the art side, there's just so much to learn as an artist about how people are responding to your art. Because oftentimes artists create something and then they throw it out at the world. But to be able to hear real people's real response to your work, that is something very special and unique that most artists literally do not ever get to see. I decided that really it will be nice if this project continues and uh, that's how I decided to kind of create this mystery art shopping clinic, which is to be a general universal tool for a measurement of um, how audience experience contemporary art and it could be in any place, in any gallery institution and anyone can perform this. By definition, understand, artists are thought leaders, okay? Artists aren't really sitting here going, I'm going to create the most popular kind of art there is. Those of us on the marketing side, we think about it all the time. You don't create a product without first testing it and making sure that people are going to like it and it's going to sell. I think this work is, is really fascinating in so many ways because it has brought these two worlds together that, that generally don't intersect much. <laughs>